Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 59. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron here in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm a video producer here with some local promotions like the International Wrestling Cartel and the Reggae Wrestling Alliance in the area. And also proprietor over at PittsburghWrestling.com where you can find some fine wrestling. Um, this is, and we got a little bit of a different lineup tonight, and we'll explain why in just a minute, but uh, you can always find all of our stuff over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or whatever form it might be. Talking about indie wrestling, talking about WWE, TNA, Midweek Wars, Lucha Underground, all kinds of stuff. Um, and you can also uh, find us at uh, 412-206-WMS0. Drop us a line at good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, at Mayhem Show on Twitter, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, the Facebook groups. Uh, where there's a lot of conversation and Google Plus as well. And please subscribe to us. All the links are over there at so WrestlingMayhemShow.com, video and audio formats. So this is going to be a little different, guys. But I don't want to break my streak. We've had an interview every week for 58 episodes. And this is episode 59. Eamon um, was joining us on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And we had uh, uh, something had come up health-wise. Uh, so we wish him the best in uh, hoping he uh, gets well uh, with with whatever's going on. He's in San Antonio. He's, he's thousands of miles away, so I can't really check on him. So uh, as long as he gets on Facebook, I can find out if he's okay. Um, but unfortunately, that means uh, it was his interview this week, so we had to cancel that because I honestly know nothing about uh, who he was bringing on this week. Uh, so we're going to do something a little different when interview somebody. And you know on this show that we have been... Um, attempting to interview people that are not just the wrestlers in the ring, but people around wrestling. We've talked to photographers. We've talked to ring announcers. We've talked we talked to ring announcers, right? That's a thing that happened, right? Okay, okay. Uh, we've talked to promoters. We've talked to, you know, you know all kinds of stuff. So um, uh, th- this is no different. And there's a guy that you'll be familiar with if you've been listening to this for a while. Um, uh, be- uh, partially because he was available. And actually, he's got to do uh, the interesting perspective on things as well. Uh, you know him. He is Wheels. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, Sorg. Thanks for having me on the show on such short notice. I mean, <laughs> it's good to be here to be able to wheel in right. my Jeez. input. <laughs> really we're going in. with that we're just going with that aren't we um yes, yes we also also with us and he's going to be chiming in some conversation about uh you know the past weekend's events with ring of honor and everything uh he has been the brainchild behind the awesomeness that is mayhem mania over in the wrestling mayhem show the thought experiment around wrestlemania uh he has a great blog over at mainstream matt one t blogspot.com he does not have to worry about the decency rules since those got outlawed by google uh and he's all good over there and I, I was mic. so there you go. excited when i saw that that got pulled back i was like i don't have to go and check my blog for indecency <laughs> now it's, it's, it's a relief. so um i'm here to help in any way i can sorg so right. I'm sure if Eamon knew that if he was going to miss tonight's show, that I would be the one replacing him, he <laughs> would have found a way. But <laughs> and we do it. There's a tweet. duty calls and the show must go on. So let's do it. And he actually did just tweet a minute ago. Apologies to Indie Mayhem Show listeners. Just became very ill before we were going to record. We'll be back next week. Well, he'll be back next week. We're still doing the show either way. Yes. Um. So no, I mean, it's, but generally we don't need the big. You know, guests or anything like that on, uh, you know, we, it, this show is predicated, you know, yes, it's nice to have the interviews from week to week, um, but it's about uh, indie wrestling and why we're excited about indie wrestling or alternative wrestling as we're kind of want to start a call and hit here as we've been having discussions here on the show. Um, and uh, well, well uh, Wheels, you know, we've, we've talked with you a bit about just stuff going on in, in RWA and everything like that. We, we've talked to some of your colleagues in uh, in Mike Doggerty and Church, of course, on the show and other wrestlers uh, from your promotion. Um, so uh, tell us, tell the people, tell the people out there, your involvement with indie wrestling. Uh my involvement in indie wrestling, I am a man of many talents, some given to me, some I've learned 
by some of the greats out there. Uh, I am the sound engineer of the Renegade Wrestling Alliance and a few other indies out of Pennsylvania, West Virginia area, which means I get to deal with the music, the microphones, making sure everything is going just fine. And believe me, mm. if it's not going fine, I hear it. You're the, you're the point <laughs> man for mess ups. Yeah. If it's not working, they're looking at me. And sometimes it's not even me. Sometimes, folks, I'm going to tell you right here. There are times, and sort of, I think you've probably dealt with this over the years with different companies you've done things with is. Yeah. Wrestlers, make sure you bring your music. If you don't have your music, you are basically part of the problem what i can give you yeah <laughs> so i mean i've been lucky enough that sword has helped me out with times that the place i some of the places i don't that i work at do not have internet sword has helped me out i've been able to grab music for people other than that hey it's whatever's on my poor laptop and sometimes it may not fit the rest of it's kind of an eclectic mix right uh, yeah, kind yeah. of your left left up with. Um, so I mean, you so you've been uh, with RWA. I think you were doing sound even before they were RWA when they weren't really kind of officially a promotion, right? I mean, right, right. I mean, that's where I basically got my practice from. I mean, I started out actually down in West Virginia helping like a company called WVWA. Um, they basically said, so you want to be a part of wrestling, but you don't want to, we know you have your disability. You can't really do too much mm. like the Zach Gowans okay. and the uh, um, Gregory Irons and stuff. Because I'm in a wheelchair, and I'm sorry, folks. I'm not going to sit there and try to bounce a wheelchair off a rope just to do some moves. But, man, if you figure it out, that would have been a tremendous sight, right? Um, <laughs> I'd say yes, but I have a story of me actually taking a bump in the ring in my wheelchair in West Virginia. Oh, geez. And it did not bode well because it was a man uh, from a lot of people from the area of Pittsburgh and West Virginia know as Bulldozer. Um, it was a group of him and a guy named Wildcat, Dr. Feelbad, mm -hmm. uh, before he became the owner of RWA. Uh, they felt, all right, this guy's not doing what we like. And they pulled me from the sound area that I was working, threw me in the ring, threw the wheelchair in the ring, picked me up, put me back in my chair, berated me in front of the West Virginia crowd that didn't know me from Adam and they they just berated me and sort of will tell you that's not the first time I've been berated in front of a crowd but this time I wasn't saved like I was in front of Jock Sampson right this time I got clotheslined out of my wheelchair and I flopped backwards and onto my stomach and they started kicking and beating on me and the most embarrassing moment ever happened in my eyes. I mean, okay, getting beat up is not the greatest thing in the world either. But my pants fell down and my butt was oh. exposed to the whole crowd of West Virginia. And they're kicking, feel bad of all people. Gets down on his knees, yanks my pants back up and says, keep your pants up. And luckily I got saved by a tag team, came out of the locker room, pulled me out of the ring, put me in my chair, and I was limp as a noodle, and they took me back into the locker room and everything where I was safe and sound. After that show, fans were coming up to me and asking me if I was okay. And I mean, hey, I, I did what I had to do, and I said, yeah, I'm all right. I mean... No worse than mm -hmm. where I'm already in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. so <laughs> <laughs> it can't get much. I, I got a beating. It can't, it can't that was get my much experience worse, right? in an actual wrestling ring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, hey, so wheels. 
when you're getting into um, when you're talking about you want to get involved in professional wrestling, independent wrestling, and and you're trying to get into it, are you thinking in the back of your mind that if I get involved in this somewhere far down the road, there's going to be some physicality or did you think that'll probably never happen? Honestly, I, I never thought I was like, okay, I'll be happy. Whatever I can do as long as I'm not in that ring. And I'd like to thank the person who got the bright idea to go, Hey, let's put him in a ring. So, I mean, Hey, it was an experience that, if you've never been beat up in a ring, don't wish it upon yourself or don't lower your expectations of things you think you can do for a company because ask me, ask poor Chachi, poor Chachi, a camera guy getting kicked in the nuts. Right, Sorg? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a wonderful birthday. So no present. one is safe in the world of professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. I think Sorg's the only one that might be safe because he has... It, maybe I did, and maybe that's a good thing. But yeah, nobody is safe in professional wrestling because they can come around, yank you from wherever you're sitting. Uh, see, I, I and not touch one expensive electrical equipment mm -hmm. that we all work with. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I've had a few close calls myself. I mean, uh, okay. I, I, I mentioned like my, the the first show that I did ringside. I actually, Danny Gregory kicked me in the stomach ro uh, rolling out of the ring because I didn't know not to stand there. Uh, quite honestly, oh, that's why I'm very careful when I when I when I'm talking to new videographers to say, you know, I hope you understand wrestling. You know, I hope you know wrestling. Hey, don't stand there. You know, um, and uh, you know, it, you know, it's one of those things. Um, other than that, just you know. You get in stuff. You get tied up in stuff, especially with the cords out there, right? Yeah, so, there's I, cords. There's there's flying yeah. wrestlers. There's fans. There's anything that can happen to you. Yeah, working in the world of professional wrestling. You know, I, I yeah. never thought about this. Like sports, I, I, somebody was telling me that sports is the hardest thing to film, and I'm like, wow, that's what I've been doing the whole time. <laughs> so right, uh, between, right, between wrestling, between football, between whatever else, um, and it makes it most interesting, you know. Especially when we get these yeah. other gigs that are not indie wrestling, that pay more, and you do half yeah. as much because you're not following two people running around doing flips in the ring or whatever the case may be, you know, your presenter or something or 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 an actor doing something, right? Um, exactly. it's, it's much much different. So I mean. But, with me doing just music, I mean, the the interesting thing is I don't have the setup like WWE, and in a weird way, I'm kind of glad because that is a lot to deal with, even with the little things I do. Mm -hmm. I push a button, I hit music, but I've learned to set up a list of wrestlers, and I put whatever music they give me, it just comes in as that a file or the title of the song. I switch that over so it makes it easier for me to put where that wrestler needs to be and type this out and right. it, it, it makes it easier. But you have WWE that deals with videos and Well and also you gotta you gotta think with WWE they have like a person that deals with the videos, a person that does this, yes. a person that does this, and they all work in concert and they have their cues. They're very, very, very meticulously spelled out. Versus yes, in any yes. wrestling you kind of have a list sometimes, depending, you know, and so, so, yeah, it so, depends on what company you work with. You right, sometimes right. have what they call a run sheet, yeah, of uh, which you can look at. And Sorg and I were lucky enough we get our run sheets, we know how to work with each other, yeah. I remember the one time Sorg, you and I worked the first time RWA had his brand new ring, mm -hmm. was a cage match up in Mount Pleasant. And you played the video. You had to play the video of the build up to the main event. No, oh, that wasn't me. But that wasn't you, me. You, that wasn't well, me. Was, I, I was, I was ringside for Mount Pleasant. That was still DH. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then, that was TF. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was TF. Uh, but I had to deal with. They had a video, but it didn't have sound going out to the crowd. Right. So I had to perfectly hit the music that they were using on that song, on that video, to match it up to that song. And I must say, 
I was nervous that day <laughs> to right, make right. sure so it like that, played you know. and ended the exact time. Right. Well, yeah, it, it, it gets difficult when you're doing something like that. And, you know, we, we get, I know you get uh, audibles all the time throughout the night about who's coming up next or anything like that, when to hit music. Oh, yeah. Uh, with whatever the situation. And I think it's gotten difficult for me with the uh, video cues <laughs> lately <laughs> uh, and some of those like, uh, like that, you know, and what we've been doing with down at the uh, Court Time Sports Center. So, uh, um, yes, any, um, I also, go ahead. Oh yeah, I do also do the website mm-hmm. and I inherited that from the original person who decided, okay, I'm tired. I will give you the website. Okay. Is it easy for me to do? Luckily it was. And I also have help from people like Sorg and a few other people that give me input and right and, and i want to point out what well, you know and that's the thing when you know I, I i'm critical about websites you know i am you know especially yes, with these and stuff. Yes. And some are doing really well and some aren't you know um and right. i think i think for what you're doing i mean you know you gotta think r to be alive if you want to check out the site uh dot com um this is like a, i mean you're using wix which is kind of like a a back-end wizzy wig kind of editor um if you know what that mm-hmm. is and this is you doing it yourself and you're not a design person period i mean you guys are also getting a, some great great stuff from uh iron skull productions for the posters and everything yes. it really steps it up makes the dvds look really uh, they really pop when i put them out on the table or the graphics up on the web um, i've also noticed uh, <laughs> sorg that uh iron skull has not only besides working on our flyers and those graphics for the website for us they've added sorgatron media to the, the posters and sh- helping you advertise and I thought that was really nice of him. Yes, yes, so, I very appreciate it. I actually didn't notice that he'd been adding those to the posters themselves. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's real cool. You have his logo on one it, one side, and you have Sorgatron Media on the other, and it's just like that's amazing. That shows what RWA is is a big family mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. everything. And the nice, cool thing about that is, uh, Matt's wife made it to an RWA show, and it was really. A pleasure to meet her. So even the Carlins are part of the RWA family in a way. That's so, right. Uh, That's right. I, we still got to get Matt out to I the show. It. <laughs> the RWA shows, um, as someone who's only kind of sampled a little bit of what um, the alternative wrestling scene is like around the Pittsburgh area, um, just the difference between going to um, the IWC, the International Wrestling Cartel, and then going – and seeing a little bit of an RWA show, totally different vibe at an RWA show, um, in a good way. I mean, bo- yeah, both yeah. directions, very good. But but you know when you're in an RWA show, it has a very different feel to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's right. It feels intimate. It feels personal. Everyone feels very invested. It's a, it's a cool vibe. Oh yeah, uh, it Sorg has men- mentioned it many a times on the Indie Mayhem show. How it is like a it's a it's a different beast on different companies. I mean, I've worked for VOW. I've gone down to the West Virginia crowds, and they all have that different feel. I've been to IWC before IWC started, and I'm like, you can see the like a difference in every company. I mean, RWA has a mix of high flyers, old school, um, that ECW esque craziness crowd feel but with the familyness of maybe a wcw in its old days Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's i mean that's why i love working this i work for dark horse you saw on the rwa website they're up in oil city that's a very different beast also to work with Mm -hmm. that's a company that i work with that has tv so i got to do a different style there than I'm used to in an RWA or a VOW. So it's interesting. I, I enjoy it very much. Awesome. So let me tell you, okay, real quick. Well, this is technically an interview. We'll, we'll drop you with the question uh, that we usually do. Um, what's the best and worst thing about your experience? I think you kind of give the story of the worst thing, but you can kind of give a more general one, I guess. <laughs> what is the best, the worst thing about uh, uh, working in indie wrestling from your angle? Honestly, I'm going to go worst and then best. Okay. Uh, honestly, I think worst is, honestly, I think it's the same thing 
maybe a few wrestlers and uh, promoters and everything out there kind of say, but don't really say unless you're maybe Jock Sampson. Honestly, if I'm in the Pittsburgh area and I don't know any other areas besides West Virginia and stuff like that, but honestly, there is a shit ton of companies in this area. I mean, I look at them all up and it's like this wrestler works for here and this wrestler works for there. Um, and I feel that if you're maybe 10, 20 minutes apart, don't use the same guys. And if you do, keep them in the same story arc or good guy, bad guy roles, I'd like to say it. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know how open we want to be on here. Because uh, you don't want, say, say hmm, I'll put a Ryan Mitchell in one company as a good guy and at another company he's a bad guy because some of those fans are going to go to these other companies and be like yeah 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 and he's sitting there cursing you out or flipping you off or crotch chopping you whatever he normally does and they're going to be like they're going to be confused and it, it's i hate that i'm like if you're going to work a company i know it's hard to I mean, I know people want to work each weekend and more days and stuff, but think about it, people. Think where you should go because, honestly, I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, I want to work VOW this weekend and RWA next weekend, and I'm going to be this person and that person. But I don't like the way this promoter treats his wrestlers, but I love how he treats the wrestlers at the other company, but I work for both of them. I think, honestly, also, promoters need to work together. I mean, they don't want to love each other, but work a little bit together. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, honestly, I loved IWC when I used to go to it, and that's when Norm ran it. I I never went when Chuck uh, ran it, because that's when RWA started. So, I didn't get the vibe, but from what I've read, I wouldn't have felt the same as I did the Norm regime. Mm-hmm. And I don't know Justin Plummer's way he's going to run, so I can't give my input on that. Uh, a Jim Miller, uh, a Bill Molinar for VOW. I mean, they're all different people, and they all use the same people. Like, you'll see Generation Dead at PWX separated, but at RWA and VOW, they're a team. Mm -hmm. And they're not that far apart from each other. Right, right. But you don't see see any more IWC guys really working at an RWA or a PWX, but you will see them at that VOW. Because... Looking at Connellsville where VOW runs and where uh, IWC run, that in a way is kind of far enough apart mm-hmm. that I think the fans will be okay with that. And that's what I think we need. We need normal storylines, better com- camaraderie, eh, camaraderie. Mm-hmm. and I can't talk tonight. But anyways, uh, but yeah. Maybe a little bit more working together and a lot less companies needing to pop up. I mean, I have to agree with some things that have been said certain places. We don't need this many wrestling companies. If you're a fan, be a fan. Don't, oh, I can do this better than this person or that person. Mm -hmm. So I'll open up my company. And all you're going to do is saturate an area. Like Sorgan and Eamon have said, and many wrestlers have said, that you saturate an area, it just dilutes it from anybody really going, oh, I went to this one, and, well, if it was bad as this one, I don't want to go to that one. Yeah, yeah. I'm still pissed at the one that happened, like, right around the corner from me here, like, in Pittsburgh, and uh, 
in in other ones and you look at it and be like oh this is indie wrestling it's like no it's not indie wrestling like like that's not the best example of indie wrestling you know even one that you exactly know, i i and I, you have to go to a west newton or an elizabeth or a mckee's port you know i i, I classify all of those uh pwx yeah. IWC, RWA as as more like no this is what the indie wrestling can be around here you know um, and even some of those talent that's going up to East Brady up here north of, of the city, you know, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I think, you know, uh, it's somebody's first wrestling show always. Yeah. So, and that's what I mean. I don't think promoters that start up and they start up around all the same time. And I agree with a certain spot that we won't mention. I agree. A lot of these newer companies pop up around tax time because that's when you can buy everything you need <laughs> that's right become a promotion that's right that's right wow. and it's a shame the good thing i'm gonna go with is getting to work i am a true wrestling fan i started in 1985 folks i'm 43 years old and since starting going to wrestling and working with wrestling i've met over probably two hundred or more of the big name wrestlers, if not the ones that just got into the big mainstay. I've met CM Punk. I've met Cesaro. I've met Daniel Bryan. And it was it's amazing to see how down the earth these guys are when you just want to sit and have a conversation right. and not bombard them with an autograph or a picture. Because they're human, folks. They are human. And I love it. It, it, meeting Gold Dust before he went, actually, I think it was maybe a week or two right before he went back to WWE mm-hmm. and he was at VOW. And taking a picture with him was one of my favorite moments of meeting him because I've watched him since the Dustin Rhodes, the natural uh, <laughs> seven dust <laughs> or seven. And that one I still find, I should have yelled at him for. Why'd you do seven? That was one of the worst ones. <laughs> but meeting a lot of these wrestlers, I'm not starstruck. I'm just glad I got to meet the people and see how down to earth some of them are. A lot of people bitch about punk. I met punk. Punk has m- admitted he's not the greatest guy. He's just very blunt. Mm-hmm. At what he's, if you treat him nice, he'll treat you nice. If you're a jerk, he will treat you like a jerk. That guy took two pictures with me in the same night because I took one with him earlier and somebody wanted one with me with a friend of mine. And he's like, get back over here. We'll take another picture together. So you want to know what CM Punk's like? Be cool with him. He'll be cool with you. Awesome. Awesome. So check out rwalive.com. Next show's coming up on the 28th this month. Uh, of course, headlined. And I think we'll yeah, speak- as long as we don't have any note, some stupid snowstorms. Yeah, that yeah. Us like, off uh, hey, last month. We, we talked about that you guys got canceled last month. Kill me. I went a whole month without a wrestling show. Even worse for you because that's the, mainly the one you do. But anyways, yeah. so uh, <laughs> let's get into a little bit of uh, indie-ish. But uh, as you were saying last show, Matt, Ring of Honor really kind of, uh, uh, you know, solidifying the number two spot over Impact Wrestling at this point. Uh, you saw the pay-per-view this week in the 13th anniversary. I did. I, I, I sought it out and uh, I, I did want to kind of see what it was just because the card was so stacked. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't even really kind of recognize it until uh, maybe two or three weeks before the 13th anniversary show went on um, and you're just kind of like looking at the card and you're like, okay, AJ Styles, uh, Alberto. And you're like bullet club. <laughs> and you're like, it just keeps going on and on. You're just like, you know, red dragon and, and uh, Daniel's a Kazarian. You're like, and then, you know, and then the final shoe drops just like a day or so before the pay-per-view itself. When, Samoa Joe leaves TNA and you just know he's going to show up in Ring of Honor like they've got everybody and 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 smartly it's not um it's not a situation where they're trying to lock these guys down you know they're not trying to nail these guys down which I think is kind of a mistake that um TNA has sometimes made 
But to, to, but to be honest, I don't think they had the money to lock them down. Right. And for well, the, I mean, for, well, the, for the number of dates that they do, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no way. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, a guy, a guy like you know Alberto, but, but by being more by Ring of Honor being more open to guys who could do like spot shows here or there, mm-hmm. they make it possible to get Styles and Alberto and Bullet Club. Those guys would not be there if Ring of Honor um, philosophically wasn't open to you know, bringing these guys into for one-off matches and things like that. And and when you see what, it, how it comes together on a pay-per-view, I mean, you end up with just like a, a stacked card. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically matches wise, um, young bucks and red dragon were awesome. They always are. Um, the match I was really interested in seeing was, um, AJ styles versus ACH. Um, ACH is one of those guys that, um, I'm very happy that I got to see him before he arrived in Ring of Honor. I got to see him at a IWC show here in Pittsburgh. And Sorg, I know I, I always end up talking your ear off about ACH whenever I uh, <laughs> yes. whenever his name comes up. He's awesome. He's, a- a- he's awesome. And 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 uh, Amen can speak to this a lot because he he's worked with uh, Amen. He's worked Amen and ACH have worked uh, the same shows a number of times with Inspire. And uh, even, I think even before it inspired to a point. Um, and yeah, we're one of the coolest, humblest guys. Um, and he does amazing stuff out there in the ring. Yeah. So, yeah. So from hearing from Eamon, he's singing the prayer. Uh-oh. And we lost Matt. <laughs> he was so Oops. starstruck with ACH, though. He dropped right off the internet, apparently. <laughs> um, Wow, it's been a night, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, anyways, uh, Ring of Honor. Yeah, yeah, you know, I got to get on the Ring of Honor bandwagon here. I know I'm, I'm kind of like watching WrestleMania, so that's really eaten up all my time. But uh, I'm finding myself. Uh, I don't know. It's because I'm also on WWE Network. I'm finding myself with a a flux of I have too much wrestling to watch at this point. Yeah. Like I, it's a really interesting turnaround, and even like it, I think there's too much wrestling to watch if you just watch WWE. Um, yeah. But now we have, if you want to seek it out, Impact, uh, Ring of Honor, uh, Lucha Underground, you know. I mean, we are having these third and fourth tier promotions pop up and it's been it, it, frankly tremendous um, uh, as a wrestling fan. Uh, and, and not to mention all the indies. You know, we're talking about stuff on TV yeah. and, and technically maybe we don't want to consider those indies, but I, I think you do. I think the independent and the alternative uh, from WWE that has taken over everything else is really, really important. I mean, we talked about that a lot here. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you, you and Eamon have said it many of times. Uh, mm-hmm. There's indies everywhere, every day, honestly, if you look. And it's almost starting now the same way with the stuff on TV. Everywhere you look, you're going to see either a WWE programming or a... DNA, a Ring of Honor, any, I mean, you look, you will find wrestling. And the, you got internet. So you're going to find wrestling from Japan, uh, England, all over the place. So there's not a reason you won't find wrestling every day. So um, we'll see if Matt will come back here. But it uh, sounds like the Ring of Honor pay per view was pretty, pretty tremendous here. Um, but, uh, I want, I'm sad that Amy couldn't make it on Maybe we'll talk at a further length of this story, uh, later on, but, uh, there was a pretty significant story popping up here over the weekend. Uh, this is, uh, you know, we talk about the give divas a chance and that was kind of the predication of this, this yeah. kind of message. Um, when, <laughs> Uh, when when we heard about this, and I was tagged in this just because it was a sick bump, and, and some people were just kind of sharing it around. I think just kind of like, wow, look at this crazy thing that happened, you know? Um, it, yeah. And we've I talked. It, Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, besides you being tagged, I mean, it was all, all over my Facebook walls. From, I mean, I have a ton of wrestling fans on my facebook and wrestlers so i'm seeing this video constantly right. and then there's different angles and every time i kept watching i'm like and it's really sick right. we're going to show a little bit here if you're on video of you know it could be a little graphic it, it, it is disturbing with the way it looks um yeah. i don't think that she was hurt 
to be clear, because no. I thought it was a, okay, now this girl's neck is broken. And we talked in the past about intergender wrestling. Uh, right. in, in this case, this was with Beyond Wrestling, I believe, up in Rhode Island. Chris Dickinson takes on uh, Kimberly. Um, and you, what happened was the match got really rough. They're basically what's being shown over and over again is the finish. And yeah. in this case, it's, um, you know, she takes a very, very stick stiff unprotected chair shot to the head and then and, it takes and a it, ridiculous I saw that chart ridiculous Her arm kind of does right. go up on it though it goes up but i really the way that came down i don't think you yeah, could yeah. much of that you couldn't tell you she could gets, not tell how she gets, bad that was she gets power bombed across the ring and slid under the uh the the ropes almost hitting her head on the post on the other side um, Honestly, I thought she did because the way she flew, mm -hmm. you could see her going across that ring, and I thought she hit the post. Right, right. So, and, and we've talked about last week, and that's that's what we were hoping the conversation would be with uh, Amon here, uh, a little bit about like you know trusting another person and, and and everything on uh you know in in the wrestling ring, us not being wrestlers or anything like that, um, right. and, and you know kind of trusting another person and looking at something like this that and, and there's there's uh reactions this post at wrestling uh inc dot com, uh really go into and I, I don't know if these are from other wrestlers fans whatever but you know some saying you know uh chris dickinson single-handedly setting independent wrestling back 15 years even without gender in the discussion that was reckless and unsafe um to a point i think i think there is have to be a discussion if we want intergender wrestling um sometimes it gets a little awkward we talked about a long time ago uh an intergender tag team match that happened at international pro wrestling day and we actually had uh darcy dixon who was involved in that match on the show mm -hmm. that was a part of rwa for a bit and i got to have a sit down with her about that because we had a long discussion about that situation um because like it was a lot of like it, it's awkward to see these giant buff six foot four guys um mm -hmm. seemingly take liberties uh physically and i mean in a wrestling sense in the ring with with uh girls that are not not thin wafers by any means but definitely significantly smaller in, yeah. in, in this case which you know ended with just like i think the guys just turning on the girls and power bombing in the ring was was what was what it ended up in. and this is the same thing now now a lot can be done in a match like this that will make it look like you've just absolutely murdered the girl in the situation and because yes. of where we are societally you're like ooh that that's you know how we've been taught you know domestic abuse this that, and the other thing and it, it becomes kind of a sickening thing because it looks like guy taking advantage of girl but, but then you, there's the other side of this too you know some point out um in a uh one uh instagram picture you know points out hey you know everybody's seeing that part of it uh something a lot of people and this is uh the username's uh help oh, you dose it dulce new i'm not i'm not pronouncing that it's, it's there <laughs> on video if you if you have it it should be yeah uh something a lot of people are unfortunately disregarding from uh the kimberly chris dickinson match at beyond wrestling is the major hurt she put on him during the rest of the match not to mention five guys she took out on her way into the ring so i mean you're just seeing the very vicious ending holy crap you know to the end that looks like it could have almost gone wrong and wrestling exactly. stuff almost goes wrong a lot you know that's why you know they, they say you know grow monsoon famously it ain't ballet right um yeah and i, I mean I really, i've watched just watching stuff like that i mean it made me because in now 24 days there's going to be a male female match. Right. At RWA. Right. And right. First time for you. That's well, Mickey Knuckles. <laughs> well, 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 who is it, 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 you got Mickey right. You got Mickey Knuckles in the guest bud, but I think we need to point out some history that RWA's had with this as well. Right, um right. that got scary and got uncomfortable, but on purpose. Because yeah. there was and we talked about this on the show at length when it was happening. But you had one that really kind of looked like it turned into uh, storyline wise, like a domestic abuse angle, right? Mm -hmm. The girl was getting kind of pushed around a little bit to the point where the guy had a match with the girl who was not at least being perceived as a wrestler in any way. Right. Was very abusive in the ring to the point where, again, I'm worried about your crowd because your crowd is really into it. I'm like, oh, God, please. Good guy has to do the same yeah. here very soon because I'm kind of. 
scared about what's going to happen here. Which, which is great because that's what happened because uh, it was, matter of fact, it was Ryan Edmonds and his manager, Angel, at the time. And who saved her was Ryan Mitchell out of at the time. So, yeah, I mean, and she was a small person and like that. Um, Kimberly, she was a small person. Yeah. So if Ryan wouldn't have stopped the other Ryan, um, that could have been her the way it happened to Kimberly. But Kimberly is a wrestler. I'm Angel, sorry. I'm sorry. Your video is pausing at the most interesting facial expressions going, in, oh, <laughs> going along with I that. I love that. I've noticed that with everybody <laughs> you gave me, tonight. So. <laughs> you gave me an interesting wide eye uh, ex- expression there in the middle of that. But um, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah. This, but you're, you're... this is going to be mm-hmm. – this, this at the end of the month is basically going to be different from what RWA has had before. This yeah. is the true first intergender match. Not only the, the male wrestler did not sit there and yeah. ask for this. Match. So we can the say this is the first, this is going to be the first competitive intergender match for you guys down there. Really? Yeah. The other Falls thing was, count anywhere. Because the other thing, like, this, it was this weird, awkward little uh, storyline point. You know, it wasn't right. really a match. Like, I don't count that, you know, uh, in, yeah. in my and mind. I mean, if anybody that follows Mickey Knuckles around, yeah. and they look up on YouTube. She is no stranger to hardcore beating the hell out of men. I, I think half the pictures when I look when I looked them up on Google Images were her bloody. So yeah, and she she this crowd is in for a treat. I must say, they are blood. going if they want blood, they're going to probably have blood. <laughs> you don't get that a lot these days. All right, on that point, uh, oh, oh, we we got our Mister Carlin's back. Oh, we do. I. Do we? Oh, we got we got the P. We got the P. It looks like we might have. There he is. There he is. I see a little bit of video. Hey, we just uh, took hey. the conversation on. We're talking about ladies in wrestling. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I didn't know if you had any thoughts. I didn't know if you saw the footage of Kimberly and uh, Chris Dickinson uh, from Beyond Wrestling and had any uh, thoughts on that before we move on. I'm not qualified to discuss. Not that. qualified. To discuss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. All right. No uh, okay. I, I I will tell you. Um, since I since my internet apparently decided to crap out in the middle of my little uh, Ring of Honor rant, uh-huh. rant the uh, the Maria ODB match on uh, Sunday was top notch. Oh yeah, yeah. As especially, um, I, I give especially high marks to Steve Carino for his commentary during that. <laughs> as, he, as he screamed, as he screamed in horror, <laughs> because apparently he was the only he's the only person in the building who actually believed that Maria's story that that she was pregnant and therefore could not fight ODB. <laughs> so once ODB went after him, he's like, "He's just pregnant." <laughs> Steve Carino is so the funny. best. I I never had I I honestly never had a high opinion opinion of Steve Carino. Um, <laughs> never. I didn't I, like, feel I, one way or the other until no. Sunday. I was like, "Wow." No, no, great. I I never I never I, like not that I didn't like the guy i'm like okay cool whatever like he did a show uh, some random spot show uh, down in bell vernon that we did one time and i'm just like why, why do i care it's like him and blue meanie and i was just so unimpressed with him and he was mm-hmm. doing he was running around as mr wrestling three or something for a while there and had the zero one championship he did another um uh benefit show that I, I attended here i think i think he dropped the zero one american belt to sjk that night uh now Corey graves and wwe of course um but uh, but until he was in a ring of honor doing his uh, look some, some of the faction stuff, especially with Kevin, Kevin Steen and stuff. Some of the commentary he's worked with Joe Dombrowski several times at this point, um, but doing his interview with Montreal theory and it was just a card, you know, it was just it was just really cool to talk with him. Uh, really cool mind for the business and just just a fun guy, you know, to deal with. And and that, that's really and he's really he he really brings it out when he does commentary, you know, like that. Like he's having fun out there, you know, and he's having a blast with Kevin Kelly, who's also really awesome. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, enough of that. Uh, geez, so we were talking about intergender wrestling, Ring of Honor, of course, really kicking ass. But uh, let me want to touch on a couple other things. We'll get out of here for the night. Um, some some wrestling, I guess locally, there's there's too many shows. Like we we're just talking about wheels. Um, well, not, yeah. not not like that. You have a choice. I mean, this is more for us because we're on the other side of it. Um, because once having all the way up in Clearfield, PA, 
right right actually to celebrate my long my long mecca voyage to a sheets and clearfield pa on saturday uh we're having a sale over at pittsburgh wrestling.com uh you can use the coupon code combat and look up any of the iwc combat and clearfield shows on there you can check out on the iwc banner at pittsburgh wrestling.com and you'll actually get half off any of those and they're already like i think six six seven eight bucks to begin with oh, there so, you go. Um, See? so that's yeah, a good sale folks check it out for, it. for a couple bucks each so some good stuff with like bobby fish um colin delaney who we had on the show several weeks ago um you know logan shula who's now you know down in nxt getting uh speared by rhino um or elias samson <laughs> you know i i keep i i keep wanting because there's samuel elias and i keep wanting to say that and that it's a whole nother wrestler actually yeah um, actually samuel Elias is the brother of sjk aka Corey Gray. And you tell me that every time and i keep forgetting that because i was not <laughs> impressed by him not impressed by him um yeah <laughs> Anyways, which is also Pittsburgh, which is also like very, very, very small world. But um, no, but the great stuff is there, the, we go up there like twice a year at this point, and they're actually doing a cage combat in Clearfield with you know friends of the show like um, uh, you know John McChesney, Joseph Brooks, uh, Justin Labar is going to be a part of it. Uh, Andrew Palace, Chess Flexor, who are strangely this is what you're talking about. They're a tag team in another group. Um, Crimson, Aiden, mm-hmm. Aiden Vell, uh, Colin Delaney's in a three way. Alex Daniels, watch out for this Alex Daniels kid. Um, I've seen him in VOW a couple times. I think he's done a proving grounds or with IWC before and impresses mm-hmm. me every time. So keep an eye out on, on what he's doing. Um, and another young kid that got out of, out of the IWC training academy, uh, Dravico. And we caught, we talked to one of the new trainers, Joe Rosa, last week on the show, of course. Um, ladies wrestling, ah, Marty Bell and Angel, Angel Dust. Dust, and uh, you know. And of course, our friend is Joe Keith Hot taking all the evidence. So, um, if you're up around, if you if you're in the middle of Pennsylvania looking for pro wrestling, head up to Clearfield just off I eighty. <laughs> so, right, otherwise, right. it'll be available on uh, Pro Wrestling PittsburghWrestling dot com uh, very very soon. Also, our friends down there, I think you said you're going down here. Wheels to uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling is having a yes. show. This is going to be, uh, I think, also in Connellsville, right? Yes, yes. It's their usual. It's place. in Connellsville. And uh, March seventh, and uh, and I can't bring up their event info to see what their poster says. Oh, this is the <laughs> scaffolding match. How the hell are yes. they having a scaffold match in that small room? Yeah, Sorg. I remember you even talking about this. So I definitely I wanted to go in the fairness of the Wrestling Mayhem show to scope this out since you would not be able to be there to see this because yes. i know what that place looks like yes, on the inside it, it, it takes and i want to see how it does it's usually a little bit before i get the footage uh to put up on you uh, vow also offer at pittsburgh if you want to check them out um but uh yeah i'm very curious to see what happens yes i i will give you my input next week also on the- let me know how joe gacy goes over because another guy that apparently i should have known about and i didn't um, Joe Gacy, okay. Yes, he's the he's apparently a CZW guy. I'm kind of curious. He all takes right. on he takes on Gory, so that could be interesting. Jimmy Nuts and our friend of the show, part of that, and all kinds of other stuff. And this is the part where Eamon will tell you about some indie wrestling that I have no idea about because that's his part of the show, but he's not here. I obviously have some issues. Tonight. Hey, if you're down in the Texas area and you love indie wrestling, go check out some of those uh, companies that. Are all over that big old state of Texas. InspireProWrestling.com. You know, Texas. InspireProWrestling.com, for instance. Oh, um, yes. that I hear that's a great company. I hear it's a great com- company. You could be a phenomenon. Oh, damn, it moved. <laughs> <laughs> Timing. It could be a phenomenon in wrestling. That's coming up here nice. on uh, March. Yeah. March twenty second. And that is a beautiful, sexy site. Look at that. I love, I love what they did there. Uh, I love that site. I think that's where I kind of got my inspiration mm, mm. <laughs> uh, another great you can get some inspiration some great writing is the bloggy blog of matt carlins yes go check it out mainstream matt with one t dot blogspot dot com you indie fans will love it all i talk about is wwe you will just be in heaven <laughs> <laughs> no, check it out and this is why we have Carlin. to have See what we're doing with Mayhem Mania. It's been a fun little uh, fun little game to play. And uh, it's especially fun watching the members of the Wrestling Mayhem show crew fight amongst themselves over matches, which is 
things got ugly a couple times they <laughs> did. earlier. They tonight. get really ugly. <laughs> It does. It does. That's why we put it there, at the end of the there show. There are no more manners in it either. No, they there are not. Like, <laughs> Chris says, I am going to match F- suck. Your I, match two moves ago sucks. I am killing it. <laughs> it's just like. Oh, wow. Well, so uh, and of course, uh, wheels at Hot Wheels RWA and RWALive.com. I'm at Sorgatron.com. And you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com that we do. Um, and also, please drop us a line. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, 412-206-WMS0. Check us on uh, at Mayhem Show on Facebook. I uh, know, at Mayhem Show on Twitter, uh, <laughs> Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Facebook groups, and Google. And uh, you can join us here and with an interview to be scheduled or rescheduled or whatever the case may be uh, every Tuesday at 11 p.m. Eastern Time at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com or stick around two hours early at 9 p.m. Eastern Time for the Wrestling Mayhem Show or even earlier at 5 30. And we talk about movies and technology in Pittsburgh and video games all night long at all the same address. So until next time, please support Indy Wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Ain't for the taste of the fly. Sing, sing, sing. You know how I act now. When you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Act wild. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.